Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Hello, fly tying friends. This is Lance from Fly Fish Food. I want to show you the Pat's Rubber Leg Stone with a couple of little tweaks. Uh, this is the stone fly that we featured in our video Modern Nymphing that covers European nymphing. This is also a great nymph for just indicator nymphing or any sort of subsurface uh, fishing where you're in a river where there are lots and lots of stone flies. This particular color combination is my favorite. You can, of course, change them to your heart's desire or to match your, your natural insect. But uh, these color combinations are my faves. So there are a couple tweaks to this fly compared to a regular path stone. I in no way claim to have invented this fly. This is a well-established pattern. It just happens to be one of my favorites. However, one thing I found over the years is that this slight kink in the shank right here, that's a, uh, that's a particular hook. If you get a Daiichi 1730 hook, uh, looks kind of like this guy right there. This is a size 10, as you can see. 1730 comes with that kink in the shank, so that's the easiest way to get these built. You can also uh, try bending your own. Some really high carbon hooks won't allow you to bend them very well. They'll break instead of bend, but uh, if you get that slight bend in there, when you add the tungsten bead and a lead wire body to the shank, it will actually invert and ride hook up. Okay, so when it rides hook up, and you're fishing nymphs near the bottom, the, the point of the hook is not contacting bottom very often. So it will bounce along the bottom and not get snagged as much. The other uh, fringe benefit here is with the hook riding up and the, and the shank on the bottom is that you'll hook a lot of the fish on the upper portion of the mouth. And if you've seen some of my previous videos where we talk about using the newer jig hooks on our flies, same principles apply there. You'll, you'll land more fish if you hook them in the roof of the mouth. Anyway, let's get this fly started. So I started with a size 10, 1730 Daiichi hook. Okay, I've got a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead in jet black. Uh, anything dark seems to fish better for me than bright colors. Copper brown tungsten beads or a metallic olive, something like that that's a little bit darker will also do pretty well. But uh, matte black, jet black seem to be my favorites. Okay, so I've, sl I've got that on the, uh, the hook shank. And now I'm going to just start the thread. Get my bobbin crate out of the way. I'm going to start the thread right behind the eye. Let's see, this is UTC 140 in dark brown, or actually brown works fine too. I usually do them in dark brown for some reason. Either one will work just fine. You're not going to see much thread on this fly. So I'm going to try and start that with as little wraps as possible, as few wraps as possible, because I don't want to create a lot of bulk. Next I'm going to add the antenna. The antenna and the legs and the tail are all going to be this Montana Fly Company Barred Sexy Floss in yellow. Okay, you can vary the size. This is medium, but you could use small if you're tying these in smaller sizes uh, to make it a little bit finer leg. All right, so now I'm going to tie the antenna on. So I've, I've got this sexy leg material on my fingers. I've got two strands that are uh, separated, and I'm just going to capture them with a thread. And with, again, very few thread wraps, I'm going to try and nail these guys down. There we go. Capture them right behind the eye. And I'm going to stretch the back end of the butts and get rid of them. And with thread tension, I'm going to hold the hook shank so that I don't bend the hook too much. And really quick here, I'm just going to whip finish with just a few whips. Pull that nice and tight so those don't slip out. And then I'm going to get rid of the thread. Okay, now I'm going to slide the bead right up against that. So we've got the legs, or sorry, the antenna on first, and if these aren't perfectly even, you can come up and trim them after. All right, so now we've got the antenna on there. Now to make this fly a little bit heavy, which I like, I am going to add some lead wire. Right now I've got 015 lead wire. You could make these heavier by using 020 or 025 or even 030. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That seems like it ought to be enough. About 20 wraps of 015. I've got it wrapped around, then I'm going to force it up into the bead. Okay, Break off the remnant here that I was holding on to to wrap it. One more push up into the bead, and now I'm going to start the thread again. Same thread, UTC 140 in brown or dark brown. I'm going to start it right behind the lead and build up a bit of a ramp of thread to push the lead right up into the bead and hold it in place. Once I get that little thread ramp built up, then I can wrap through the lead wire to really hold it there. 
If you're uh, if you have trouble with your your fly when you're all done, if they tend to twist on you, you can add super glue to that stuff. That'll really anchor in the lead wire, and then it won't move at all. But I find if I build this nice little thread ramp, they don't really go anywhere. Okay, now I'm going to move the thread on down the shank right to the bend, and I'm going to tie in some more of the sexy floss for the tail. Again, just kind of lining them up. I've got two of them in my fingers here. I'm going to capture them right on top of the hook shank. And I want them to separate a little bit and spread. I can do that a bit by uh, the amount of tension I have on the thread. If they're really un unwieldy, you can uh, stick the thread between the two to make them really stand out. There's all kinds of tricks you can do there to make them separate. But I like to have that kind of separated profile, much like that. Okay, they don't have to be perfect, but we want them to be separated. The next part of this is probably the trickiest part, and that is it's hard to get. But we have this tricky stonefly chenille, we call it. It's basically just variegated chenille. This is black and coffee in color. However, this is a very, very small size. So this, this is what we call stonefly chenille in our shop. Uh, other shops will have this color combination, but very, very few, uh, if any, will have this size. So this is the smallest of chenilles you can buy in variegated. Most places sell size 2 or medium chenille. This is size 0 or the extra, extra small. So this will make a very fine stonefly nymph. One thing I think you'll find if you look at stoneflies in the river is that they're not really very bulky. They're fairly sparse. They're a large insect, but they're not as fat as most of our imitations. So this really thin chenille is going to make a, a very thin body. Okay. So I moved my thread up to about where the lead wire starts, and I'm just going to let it hang there. It's going to build up a little bulk, but I don't really care because I'm just going to build a thorax there anyway in a second. So I'm going to wrap the chenille around the shank. I'm going to utilize the function of my master vise with the rotary, true rotary function there. So I'm going to wrap it right up to about where the lead starts. Then I'm going to capture it with the thread maybe two times around just to hold it in place. Okay. Now I'm going to leave the chenille there and I'm going to add the legs. You could cut the chenille, but now if I did that I'd have to then reattach it. So I'm just going to cut it off and I'm going to take the same sexy leg material and tie in my legs. Now if we get anatomically correct here, stoneflies have six legs. So technically we should add three legs per side. I used to tie them all with three legs uh, on each side. Now I just do two because I figure if the fish start counting how many legs we have on our stones, we're in big trouble. But no, all kidding aside, we uh, I just don't find that the fish care if there's two or three. Two is faster to tie, and it actually also sinks a little quicker because it has less resistance. So I'm back to where I just fish two legs on each side, probably mostly because I'm lazy. I can get them done quicker with two. But if the fish cared, I'd do three. They just don't. Thankfully, they're not counting the legs. So one thing that I, I got to back up here. One thing I did on these legs that I didn't show you very well is the way that I like to tie them on. So I take the leg on the thread and I wrap it around the thread, capture it, and then rotate the thread around the hook. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And I'm just going to capture it onto the side of the hook. And now it's pinned in place. Okay. From that position, I can manipulate where the leg is going. And again, thread tension plays a big role here. If I wrap really tight against this leg, it's going to pull it out and make it come more perpendicular to the shank. If I let a little bit of thread tension off there, it will lay back along the side of the shank a bit more. Again, don't worry too much about them being perfect, but you want to make them pretty close. Okay, so now I've got my X pattern on my legs. I'm going to cut this one because he's a little bit long. Okay, and again, if they're not perfect, that's okay. Mine are actually looking pretty good, but if they weren't perfectly symmetrical, I can now manipulate them with the chenille. So if I wanted to pull this leg back a bit, I can wrap chenille over it. If I want to push one forward, I can wrap chenille behind it, right? So you can see what I'm doing there. Let's maybe go that way. I'm going to wrap around. I'm going to go around one more time on this guy. In between the legs, then I'm going to go in front of that leg there. And finally, in front of this leg, then I'm going to capture the chenille right behind the bead. Get rid of it. Now I can give this guy a little bit of a stretch and he'll come back up into place. Get rid of the loose ends on the chenille. Now I'm going to whip finish right behind the bead. Pull on that nice and tight. And the last step is to come back in here and make my legs about the same length. These are a little bit on the long side. 
I don't like making them crazy long. I find that stone flies have uh, longish legs, but not crazy, crazy long. So that's imitating their basic, uh, you know, very well imitating their, their natural length. So you can see I've made a very sparse stone fly. That's a size 10 hook. Keep in mind that if you tried to use medium chenille, this thing would be uh, quite obese, right? It'd be on Biggest Loser or something like that. So anyway, we want to make a nice thin stone fly. It sinks faster. It looks more realistic. Put those sexy legs on there and let the fish find your stone fly sexy. Ah!